Hello and welcome. Welcome to the channel. My name is Kuber. I'm a CSEC licensed immigration consultant. This channel is all about Canadian immigration news, updates, things you should do, things you should not. There is an update on the 700 international students who are facing deportation from Canada. Now, I know the news, media, articles everywhere. This whole thing is about this 700 internet. Actually, it's not 700. Uh, from what I understand, the number is much, much, much higher. The investigations are ongoing earlier. So to give you a background, the so-called 700, so it's not 700. And, and these deportations, these inquiries have been going on for quite some time. It's not like suddenly it's happened in 2023. These have been up and about for, for a very long time. Now, what, what's happening with these is that these international students went to an agent in India and they uh, expressed their intention of wanting to study in uh, in Canada. The agent scammed them. Uh, that's what the story is, that the agent cheated them by giving them fake uh, college acceptance letters. Uh, their applications were approved. So that was the first uh, issue that has to be addressed as to IRCC not having validated those acceptance letters, but did actually approve these applications. These candidates came to Canada. They started once they came to Canada, the agent then told them that, please do not go to that college. Your admission has been cancelled uh, because you were late, because the program was changed, because the seats are full. We are going to send you to a different uh, location, to a different college. And the students never, never really realized what's happening. And they went on to a different college. They studied, they completed their studies. And only when they were applying for their permanent residence or through different processes of inquiries, they were started getting letters from CBSA to appear for a hearing. That's when they realized that the uh, first visa as a student visa that they obtained was through a fake or a scammed or a fraudulent document. And therefore they were being deported. They were being removed from Canada. A lot of them actually then filed for relief from the federal court as well. Even the federal court was not in their favor because at the end of the day, even if you're using a consultant, even if you're using a lawyer, even if you're using an agent, no matter who it is, it is your responsibility as an applicant that everything that goes in your application is true. All the documents are genuine. And even if the consultant, agent, lawyer makes a mistake, screws it up, it's on you. It's, I mean, yeah, the agent, you can go and, you know, hold their neck and tell them, how did you do this? Why did you do this? But at the end of the day, it's you, your application and your future, which is online. Therefore, first, choose your agent, consultant, lawyer carefully. When you deal with unscrupulous individuals, the chances are uh, they're treating you as a guinea pig testing on your heads to see and learn and experiment. And uh, if something goes wrong, you basically will have no say. Uh, you will not be able to go to any regulatory body. You will not be able to do anything about it. So that, that's why that's the first area that you need to be careful about. Secondly, know what goes in your application. There are so many agents, consultants, lawyers who will not tell you uh, what all documents have been submitted. Or even if they will give you the submitted documents, they will not give you their submission letter. They will not tell you what have we filed as part of your submission letter? It's your right. It's your absolute right to have every single document, every single information that's gone in your application. You should ask for it, have a copy of it, because God forbid tomorrow something goes wrong, you should have a full record of what went into your application. Now, pro tip for those people who are always wondering, my agent has submitted the application two years, three years, four years back. I do not know what went in my application. What do I do about it? Well, you can apply for ATIP notes. ATIP stands for Access to Information and Privacy or also called as GCMS notes for the full, complete file, including all your documents. It may take a little bit longer, but with a fee, you can get this document. So which basically means IRCC is going to get you, will send you the complete record of what they have on file for that application. So you will get every single document, copy of every single document back. And that way you will know what forms were completed, what information was filled out on your behalf and what documents were submitted. Uh, that way you will be more informed. But however, let's come, come back to these 700 international students. So what IRCC has now done after a lot of political pressure, out of a lot of pressure, uh, <clears throat> and obviously, right, the, the students who were victimized, they were demonstrating in, in Brampton and several other places. And there was a lot of, uh, you know, how, how politics is, right? So politics always plays the game. So the Conservative Party, the NDP, and all these guys made a guest appearance trying to sort of show empathy, sympathy with the whole student issue because all they wanted was to sort of make a noise, get their own faces out on the cameras. But anyways, it worked, and that's what matters. What that has done is now IRCC, Sean Fraser, the Minister of Immigration, has 
held a recent media release where he said that they so they are setting up a task force so at first of all they have put on halt all deportations so nobody will be deported here on everybody has been given a temporary relief all right that's the first thing it's temporary relief it doesn't mean that deportations have been cancelled cancelled Secondly, they said they're going to establish a task force. Task force, task force comprising of some senior government officials from IRCC and CBSA, where each case would be reviewed, would be analyzed, would be checked, would be um, investigated, each one. And thereby, they would identify or they would look to seek more information, more evidence to support. So the, it, the students uh, here would have to present more evidence to show that they were the ones who were victimized, that they were not complicit. If it is it is uh, uh, decided, identified, uh, agreed upon that these in students were victims, they were not really part of the scam, they did not know, they genuinely did not know what the hell was going on, then they would be given relief, they would, their work permits, their study permits or their temporary residence in Canada would be extended so that they can continue, you know, which with, with the whatever pathway they wish to, wish to go with. If obviously an individual was identified to be complicit, uh, if it was identified, this person never had any intention to study in Canada. So basically what they will be looking for from these students is to prove that they were genuine students, that they have completed their education, that they scored well, that they did not really, you know, like just land in Canada, forget about the college, now that I'm not having it, let's go and work, uh, never studied, all those kind of activities that would show that those persons or those people were never really interested in studying. They use that as a way to come to Canada and hence those people can look forward to going back and face the law as, as it was intended to. Uh, but this for the time being has given uh, a relief to those students and therefore uh, they will not face deportation at this point of time. But it is still the onus, the burden of proof is still on those students to provide documents, evidence to show that they were not complicit. And this also brings to limelight IRC on IRCC as to what the what the hell is going on with their departments. Why uh, why weren't these acceptance letters checked in the first place? I mean, these are not just five, ten, seven, seven, fifteen, twenty, thirty people, right? Seven hundred are here. There are a lot of people who have already been sent back. Uh, they didn't make a noise. Nobody supported them, so they were asked to leave. They left whether they thought there was no resolution or whether they didn't have enough money to hire a lawyer and file a case in judicial for, for a judicial review or or take any um, legal uh, route and they have left the minister has said that those individuals would also have the same uh, resolution option if they can prove that they were genuinely involved in studies that they may have a chance to return back to canada and they may not face a five-year ban overall i Overall, I would think it's a very sensible and a logical way of, of, of resolving this situation. What it should not do is set a wrong precedence. Uh, that's, that's, the only, that's the only concern. But as long as the genuine students who really were a victim of this whole situation, they have a chance to sort of you know mend their ways and mend this whole situation and look forward to living in Canada peacefully, then that should basically be the right way to do, right? So overall a, a good way to sort of end this situation or end this deadlock hopefully we will have or we will hear more about this in terms of the better news out of this one thank you so much for joining in uh, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel yeah and if you wish to book an appointment then that is the link uh, this is the email address if you want to reach out to us to handle any of your applications we do also handle refugee cases, we handle applications for HNC, humanitarian and compassionate grounds. We handle applications for detention reviews. Uh, hopefully if you don't get, if you get detained for whatever the reason might be. And we also handle appeals in the IRB Immigration Refugee Board. And if you are in any of those situations, want to discuss, consult, then please by all means do. Uh, thank you so much for joining in. It has been a pleasure again doing this episode and I shall see you soon. Take care.